we're now going to begin our panel discussion. Makayla Gowdy will be our moderator this evening. Uh, will the panelists come to the front, please? Services Department. She is a California native who attended BYU Hawaii as a student in the 1990s. She married Vermont Brothers of Tahiti, graduated with a degree in travel and business management, and started working at EIS as an office manager in 1995. Camper and Vermont are the parents of two wonderful children, two lovable pit bulls, and two cantankerous turtles. <laughs> Having taken only one required a uh, computer course during her studies. All of her tech experience has come as a result of tenacious on-the-job learning and of training. Michelle Fulavaca was born in Fortuna, California and is the second of three children. In her senior year of high school, she was accepted to BYU Provo and Ricks College and made a decision to go to Ricks College. After one year, she transferred to BYU Hawaii and completed a degree in travel management. She worked in the travel field for about four years before she decided to go home to raise her three boys. After she moved back to Hawaii, she felt the travel industry had changed and the, she needed to pursue something different. She decided on information systems and went back to school and graduated from BYU Hawaii in 2007. She started working part-time 11 years ago in what is now the Educational Outreach Office and is now working full-time in the Inf Enterprise Information Systems Department. And finally, Sarah Baker. Um, Sarah is from New York, majoring in information systems with a minor in information technology. Currently, she is working to certify herself in SAP software. She works in the ACLS department fixing computers, and she's also a kayak tour guide and a swim teacher. She will be graduating this June, and she's very excited to see her family. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so we're going to just ask a few questions. They kind of go back and forth between stuff that was mentioned in the panel, things that are applicable to your life. But our first one, and anyone can answer if ever just feels like to say something. But the first question is, what do you like about being a systems analyst? What do you find exciting about the field? So anything in your guys' jobs, anything in the field? <laughs> okay, I think, can you hear me? Oh. Um, I think this was a, uh, addressed probably more towards Michelle and I, since that's what we've been doing. <laughs> um, uh, being a systems analyst is something that kind of just evolved over the years for me. Um, I guess I'd been doing that um, sort of a job for most of my career, but it just wasn't labeled as such. So now that it has a label, it gives it more direction. Um, so what I've been doing is just um, supporting the front line of the system users on campus and helping to dig into the, the code in the back. I'm not a coder, I'm not a, a developer, but I can get in and, and read enough to see where systems are, are having problems and identify things that need to be addressed and you know, find bugs or whatever so that we can you know, fix that. So that's something that as a travel major I didn't get any kind of training on. Um, it just wasn't something that even crossed my mind. So getting into this, um, this field was quite by chance. Um, I took a job as a secretary or an office manager um, right out of college. And I was really fortunate to have a boss who saw there was some potential in me and asked if I'd be interested in trying to learn something about supporting the HR system that they were implementing at the time. And I was, you know, well, why not? You know, I mean, taking advantage of every opportunity to learn is the most important thing you can do. As you, you know, go through your career, there's going to be new things to learn almost daily. And so not shying away from those opportunities is what's going to help shape your career and, and give you opportunities that you never thought existed. And so I think it's been interesting that you know, I was able to jump into this career totally unexpectedly, um, just by being the kind of worker that my boss saw value, that I could do things and learn things. And that's kind of where I ended up in this career, and, and it's been really interesting. That was wonderful. Such a great example, too, of taking opportunities 
Would you like me to go ahead and say it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, same thing. Um, first of all, I enjoy just the newness, the experience of learning something new. And so that's why it's kind of worked well for me also to be a software analyst. Um, as Kimber said, though, I, I really kind of evolved in this position also. She said, um, I really didn't have the position of software analyst when I began. And in fact, when I was in the, at the time, the CITO, which was, is now the outreach program, I did, I, I remember searching for a data storage company. That's kind of where I started. Um, after that, I moved over to another area, did video editing, and then took on to um, Blackboard. That was a pre Canvas. After that, I moved to Canvas, moved to then um, doing more user account creations and login troubleshooting and email stuff and and it just really has evolved a lot and so I, I see myself really learning also along the way it's been really great but again um, it's what you put into it it's what you're willing to learn to get you to that point and so I think as she mentioned you usually do seven jobs by the time you're 40 I think I've already done my seven jobs but under the same you know, I haven't left the area. <laughs> so definitely been a learning and growing experience. But I think that's re really what I do like about it is, is the change and the different things I get to learn and do. Yeah, that's wonderful. That sounds so wonderful to have all that change, have all those opportunities and work. So our next question is, what are the benefits and challenges for women in technology? <laughs> This one felt good, and then I had the mic, and then okay, I'll just hold it. Um, so I'm not working necessarily in the technology field yet, as I'm still kind of in school. But I think a benefit is that I don't think we always think about is that girls and guys kind of think differently, which I think can be used to an advantage because um, although some people, no matter your gender, are more analytical than others, I think the way we talk to people and the way we just kind of view things is different. Um, just enough where I think it will be a benefit the more women do start working in technology. Uh, a challenge was the other part of the question, is yeah. I think because there's this kind of stigma that it's mostly supposed to be like, especially for coding, that it's supposed to be guys, you do as a girl kind of have to work your way in there and say, no, I deserve to be here too. and. I think you have to be just kind of confident in yourself and you have to go into it being confident in yourself because it's really not going to matter what anybody else thinks. So you just have to be prepared, I guess. Yeah, that was an amazing answer. I think she mentioned kind of in the webinar too that they had women and they were even targeting men because we just think differently sometimes. There's a difference for sure when it comes to the field. Next question. Or if you have something to say about that one too. Benefits, challenges? You know, really, for challenges, I haven't really encountered. I, I work with a great group of people, and I think that really makes a difference. They're very supportive and very helpful, and things that I may not know about, um, they're really, really good, both the men and women, and helping me to learn. So that's, that's always been a great thing. I think one of the benefits, of course, has been um, I've learned how to be real patient with teaching people how to, how to um, use technology, and so it's helped me with my relationship with my husband so I can help him download the apps on his phone and help him with his email settings, so I think that's been a benefit. Patience is definitely key in technology. probably know that as well, too. So our next question that we have here is, with technology um, evolving rapidly, how do you keep up with the changes? So all the new things that come up, you guys probably get notified all the time that there's some new technology on the market, something coming about. What do you guys do with that? How do you think about that? Change is the only constant in technology. Um, I, my job has changed so many times. I've been at the same department for 22 years, but my job has completely changed. It's revolutionized itself, you know, every couple of years. And, you know, that's the thing is technology today is going to be obsolete by the time you guys are in your next career. You know, you're entering the career force and you're going to be finding new things and hopefully um, it'll 
it'll be the kind of changes that will embrace the differences between the way women think and men think and become more synergistic in the way that technology evolves so that it it addresses the needs of both of all people. Um, so it being creative and being open-minded, I think, is um, you know the the way to keep up with the changes and to create those changes that need to happen. Um, yeah, what a wonderful insight too that change is only constant. I think in technology, I would agree with that completely. Anybody else? Yeah. So, how did you get into the technology field? I know some of you guys have mentioned a little bit you mentioned the beginning of your career, but anything else you want to expand on that? Yeah. So, uh, growing up, my dad, uh, he and he is still a software engineer. And so pretty regularly at home, he would be taking computers apart and have bits and pieces all over the ground. And I'd come up and, I don't know how safe this was, touch him and get inside the computer and see uh, what he was doing. And he'd just constantly like, hey, look at this cool trick I learned how to do today. And totally he'll have me do really basic coding when I was really little. So I was influenced, I guess, from really young, kind of like, by the time I came to choose a major and what I wanted to do, I think I pretty much already knew it just because I'd already been around it so much and had been taught a lot and it's been You probably put more by the time you were five than I have in my whole life. Sure. What kind of technology opportunities are available for women in Hawaii? And I know what kind of unique, especially on this side, you guys work over here, but what opportunities do you guys want to Gosh, in, in technology, it can just be about any industry, really. It's, um, healthcare has technology uh, beyond nursing or whatever, doctoring, or whatever. there's you know, machinery and there's industries that just, every industry has some sort of technology needs. And so I think it's hard to find a job that doesn't require basic tech experience, you know, knowing how to use computer systems and how to learn about new computer systems and, and how you go about embracing knowledge and change. Um, in Hawaii, I mean, I'm not really in the job market. I'm really happy with my job. So I haven't been looking outwards, but I do see, you know, I, I see every once in a while, there's, you know, in my next career in the travel industry, <laughs> someday when I retire <laughs> from this job, <laughs> um, there's a lot of tech stuff going on, and, and I keep my, my ear to the pulse of the travel industry, and, and things are changing, and mostly, I think, where the changes are going right now, security and, and virtual threats, those are the kinds of things that are becoming so much more paramount to know and have a, a handle on and how to prevent threats and handle them when they come up. That's the kind of tech that every company needs to protect them. I mean, major corporations are under attack daily and, and that's something that isn't really thought about a lot, but security in tech is a huge, huge need for everywhere. I completely agree. I know safety is a big concern for most companies, and I didn't even think of that myself, but I could imagine that would be a huge opportunity. So I have a short one to add to this because I've been job hunting a lot. This is my <laughs> last, a lot of job hunting. Um, and for Hawaii specifically for tech, for my kind of like business and tech kind of side, um, I know there's a lot of places with the military here that are looking for um, contractors and you have to be willing to go through a background check but there's a lot of them that are looking like I looked at some places Schofield and also I think you mentioned hospitals too there's a lot of hospitals in Honolulu that are looking to hire too. Uh, but do you have to be uh, bound by location because with technology can't you just work all over the world? Location matters sometimes. Face-to-face -face interaction does have its benefits, but you know, I'm a project manager also as part of my job, and in 2015, I implemented the new HR system. I was the project manager for the HR system that we're using for payroll and you know, timekeeping. It's called Workday. It's taking over the world by storm right now. 
And that project was a dual campus implementation with BYU-Idaho and BYU-Hawaii, and we did most of that virtually. And so there was a lot of travel involved because face-to-face -face is a lot more synergistic and a lot more productive. It's but location doesn't always matter. Some corporations are willing to work remotely and, and have some, you know, work at home, part-time kinds of schedules. There's a lot of that, you know, a lot of opportunities available that way. I love what she said in the panel too as well. She talked all about relationships, which I guess I didn't think about as much in the technology field. You assume that people, you know, sit behind computers and work that way all day, but it's a lot about relationships too. Like you said, face to face. That's a great example. So here's our next question. It's a little bit long. In the United States, there's a heavy emphasis on introducing STEM early in childhood. What advice would you have for parents to encourage their children to become tech savvy? I'll start with that. Um, I have three boys, and um, I think, well, right now, you really don't have to introduce kids anymore to technology. It's all around them. Um, I think what you have to do is direct them. Um, you know, there's only so much uh, of the social media and the, and the uh, Netflix that they need to, to know about that I think you can turn it around and say, well, how do you think that works? Ask them questions. Um, get them involved. I remember, you know, it was when technology was first coming out when my, my kids are younger, but I had them do the Mavis Speak and learn how to type program. And I'm sure they loved it because of the, the games on there, but they learned how to type. So it's those little things that you can do, get the right software for them to learn things um, and not just to play games. So that's just one thing that we did. Um, also, my husband also always encouraged my boys to try to take a technology class. And um, I think as examples, you know, we can teach them what we learn and just continue to, to steer them in, in direction. So they know technology. They may not end up going in that field, but at least they have a, a good background because it, you can use that at home or wherever. So I think things like that. Um, um, let's see. I think that's, that's pretty much what I thought about. I love that you mentioned asking questions. That's a great way. I would never thought about that. So having not been out of high school for that long, my middle school and high school offered no technology classes at all. And I tried to get into a pro, uh, like a very intro programming class, and they didn't even let me with my scheduling. They had other, like, other things already set up that I was supposed to go through. So I'd say um, even if there's any kind of like clubs or anything outside of school if you can't, like even if I had just taken one really easy coding class in high school, I feel like I would have had a way easier time. Um, even, not even just for being a computer major, but just for like a lot of computer things. Probably that increases. I guess they're talking about she tech and all of those sorts of little clubs that they have, the experiences, hopefully that gets bigger. This is our last question for the night. If anyone else has any questions as well, they're more than welcome after this one to raise their hand. How do you stay motivated when others discourage you from working in STEM and technology? I don't, I don't think that I've been discouraged, but I, I have noticed, you know, in thinking about this, that I am t typically the only woman in the room when it comes to a lot of the meetings that I'm in, engaged in, in, in projects and in corporate kind of meetings. It's very common to be the only woman, if not a very small minority of the women in the group. And um, it can be discouraging. You know, you might sometimes think, you know, these guys are going to run all over me, but everyone's valued, everyone's, you know, ideas are important to a team, to projects. Everyone's point of view has something to contribute as long as you're, you know, working towards the same goal. So I don't think that I've been discouraged, but I, it is a very different um, feeling being the minority um, where you're having to stand out from the crowd a little bit and provide kind of a balancing opinion on things. It, it, is, it is a challenge, um, but I don't think that I've been discouraged. I've maybe been a little discouraged, but not a lot, but more of um, I think it, it's also because I'm working with a lot of young guys that don't also have the, I don't know, we're all young, I think is that part of what 
does it, but very much like I've gotten looks like, I'm surprised you know how to do this because you're a girl, which is fine because some people just don't know or they might not have thought about it. But I think you have to remember why you're there and why you think it's fun for you. And um, you can't think that other people are smarter than you because probably if, if they think about you that way, their social skills aren't as good as yours anyways. So you just kind of have to <laughs> um, just kind of remember that you're doing it for yourself and um, know that no one else is necessarily smarter than you. They may have gone through more and learned more in school or learned more in their job than you, but you are if you have the job and you're working with them, then clearly you have the capacity to get up to that level. Yeah, of course. You know what what keeps me me motivated. I'm sorry. What keeps me motivated is I, I really enjoy it. So um, as far as uh, discouragement, I haven't um, really had that either. There's a monthly meeting that I'm, I'm involved with, with meeting with the CES collaboration, um, technology collaboration, and I'm the only woman that is on that call. It's a, it's a conference call, but it's, again, I feel very comfortable. Um, I don't, you know, really feel the minority at all. But um, I think a lot of it comes from, again, my upbringing, and that's where parents come in a lot. Um, my, I would, my dad was a mechanic, and um, I'd go out and watch him a lot of times. So I learned a lot of things that way. In fact, at one time, I even thought I might be a big mechanic. I thought that'd be kind of <laughs> fun. And, um, and my mom, she actually went to back to school, even when I was already, I think, in college myself, and went back to school to become a carpenter. And again, you don't see too many women carpenter. And so I think I had a really good role model. Um, I figured she could build a house, paint it, make the quilts that go in it to decorate it, and also can the food that, you know, that's you know, in the house. So she kind of could do it all. And so I think I had that same kind of a, a feeling that you know, it doesn't matter what I want to do. If I put my heart to it, I can do it. And so I don't think it discouraged with that. What a great role model. So you mentioned um, talking about how you just have to remember that it's fun, and you talked a little bit about how you enjoy it a lot. What's maybe the most interesting part of your job, or the most fun part of your job that kind of bring people to want to go into technology? Because I wonder if people, some people see like only the fun like social media side and stuff like that, and some people think like, oh, it's boring sitting behind a computer, but I know it's a lot more than that. So it's kind of the fun part of your guys' jobs. For me, troubleshooting is fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also I think it's interesting, all three of us had engineers as fathers. Um, I was always very interested in engineering and that sort of thing as a kid, but it, it wasn't something that was really emphasized as me, you know, as a, a potential career for me. Um, so yeah, parenting really makes a difference. You know, I, I thought I'd go into um, chiropractic or something more manual, but um, it's fun for me, like, for a long time, I was in charge of the timekeeping system, the time clocks on campus. And any time they'd get broken, which was, you know, at least every other week, um, <laughs> someone would break a time clock, and I'd get to go out and take it apart and, and play with it. And that was my candy. <laughs> that was the fun part of my job, was going in and playing with the mechanics. Um, but that feeling that you get after fixing something or, or answering a question or making sure the payroll actually works, um, it's like you feel this high. <laughs> you feel it's a lot of fun to, you know, resolve issues. That's amazing, yeah. This is going to sound super nerdy, but what is super fun for me, the front end and the back end of websites is really interesting to see the difference. Sometimes if you ever have a hard time refreshing a page and it just shows you like the basic HTML, like the plain text and then the link and it looks horrible and ugly, like knowing that someone had to take all that and make it look gorgeous with all these pretty pictures and fonts and links and like laying it out so someone can look at it and right away know like where their eye should go to where they should click next like that all had to be thought about which is like in a way kind of artsy a little bit it takes a lot of knowledge of like human mind like what draws your attention I think that's so cool I don't know why that fascinates me so much but being able to take like such huge amounts of data and then lay it out nicely I enjoyed doing it.
What would happen at BYU Hawaii if you wouldn't be doing your jobs? Don't be in the fire right now. <laughs> what would happen? Because I'm, I want everybody to know the power of women. What happens? Um, you would still be handwriting your, your papers and handing them in manually um, to your teachers. You um, would not be able to log in to check your grades. Um, Register all those things that um, <laughs> that you do with technology. Yeah, it would all be manual. It would it would be all old school, <laughs> going back to the paper and the pencil and and the teachers. Uh, they they enjoy technology too. They do. I know Hel Helen is a very good advocate for using technology in the classroom. Um, those are a few things. I think we provide the attention to detail. Um, that sometimes the programmers just, you know, they'll put out a, a page, but it doesn't really look nice, congruent, you know, flow, or whatever. So we, we kind of work with them and, and make sure things are readable and understand, you know, look nice, uh, that front end, um, the aesthetics of things. And um, also we, we act as interpreters. <laughs> you know, when people look at me, they think I'm a tech person. When I look in the mirror, I don't see a tech person. I see someone that can try to translate and, and serve as a moderator <laughs> between the tech people and the regular English-speaking people. <laughs> For my IT office that I work in specifically, you wouldn't be able to print anything. Uh, you probably would have most of the computers in the library and the labs in the HGB and GCB. Those would probably all be broken. Projectors wouldn't work. Probably teachers would have to use whiteboards again <laughs> instead of like the projectors. Yeah, that's, I do not want to live in the world where you guys <laughs> aren't working, so you're doing great. Can I ask one more question? I'm, yeah, to me, this is so fascinating. Uh, when I started the master's program, I started computer science. They, they told me that I was in the wrong class because I, I was a woman. And so, uh, as I'm looking at where I'm coming from and where we're going, you have said some really interesting things. Uh, do you think that the technology field will be women dominated because it requires relationships, creativity, attention to detail? Uh, because I'm seeing once the women get to this field, there's no stopping for them because they can manage things much better than some other people. <laughs> sure. I think as soon as more women get into the field, people are going to realize what an asset that is. I, I don't think necessarily it's going to be women dominated. I don't think the number of men is going to go away simply because I think the stereotype is like men sitting there like coding away and it's like what they love, love, love to do. And I think women are more the people person side generally. That's super not always true. But I think businesses are just going to realize that they're going to need more women to be able to reach out to other companies maybe. Do you think a coding will be something, something everybody has to learn to do? I mean, I started with two secretaries. Then all of a sudden I have to do everything myself. Then I have to learn all these other things. And you talk a lot about coding. Is coding something in 10 years? We have to be able to write code pretty well because now we start in elementary school. I don't necessarily think it will be something you have to know for daily life, but I think maybe in schools it'll be taught you need to at least know how code works because the more into technology we go, we're going to have refrigerators and microwaves that talk to us and eventually so many more parts of our lives are going to have technology and that kind of like when you take a earth science class or geography or something you want to know how that works or why our daily functions work I think it's just going to become kind of a science like that um, well what you were saying women dominating I don't know because for me it comes down to what my priorities in life are and personally my family really comes before my career. And that's what I love about this career is that there's some flexibility in it and there's 
there's ebbs and flows to you know the job, and for women to really take over, they would have to double up even more on taking care of family and home, where that that traditional role still exists, and you know taking on a lot more responsibility at work, and it's something that is a little bit more intimidating to jump back into once you've raised your family, and so it, I think just gender roles are not going to go away. So I can see if women are a lot more involved because you know we, we do have a lot more opportunities and we do get in the door a lot more frequently now, but it just really comes down to priorities in life. Yeah, those were all great answers. This was a wonderful set of panelists we had today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I will go on ahead and give the closing prayer and then feel free after to have some refreshments. And if you have any questions about Management Society or Women in Business, feel free to talk to myself or any of our Management Society um, people here today. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this beautiful day. We're grateful for the opportunity that we have to gather together and to learn from Sarah, Michelle, and Kimber. And we're grateful for the opportunity we have to attend school here, and we're grateful for the insights and the experiences that have been shared this evening. Heavenly Father, please help that as we travel home this evening that we will be able to do so in safety. Help that as we approach our finals that we will be able to have success with them. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.